Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Video Fix. Now in this week's episode, we're gonna overview something that we talked about in the newsletter that we sent to our patient, family, and friends. And I said there were two secret things you could do to your coffee to make sure you get the most benefit out of it. Those two things, spoiler alert, is use an organic coffee. You don't need the extra pesticides they spray on typical coffees like they do on all the other vegetables and fruits that we consume. Number two, it's best if you actually grind your coffee the same day that you're going to drink it. I know this is a lot to ask first thing in the morning, but you can always start with something a little bit more of a compromise, maybe an organic fair trade coffee from Trader Joe's is one of my favorite, and put it in one of these bad boys. But if you can make your second coffee a, from an organic source or um, grind it the very same day, then you're gonna be much better off in the long run because we found that coffee increases metabolism, prevents certain types of cancer, and even is an anti-inflammatory system-wide. Now the recommended dosage of coffee is a couple cups a day. Now if you are one of those like myself that drinks six to eight cups a day, it's actually an inflammatory thing. So if you're dealing with pain or some grogginess or some uh, organ issues, you may wanna cut back on your coffee. Don't totally eliminate it, but a couple cups a day should be the sweet spot for you. Let me show you right now what I do at my house and what I recommend you do whenever you go to make a coffee. So as you can see, it's not a simple process by any means. So if you're groggy when you wake up in the morning, this may not be um, your first option. You may wanna to run to your Keurig, but this will give you the most benefit because one, it, I use organic coffee beans. This one, I store this in the tin so it doesn't break down but this is organic coffee beans. This is actually uh, maple and bacon flavor, mind blown, I know. Um, I think I got this at Plum Market. This is hot water. So in this case, I have something special because I'm kind of a tea snob, so I look at oolong whites, but it also has a French press setting right here. So I'm gonna set this right here, French press 200 degrees, they say is the good amount to use for a perfect French press. Next is the grinding part. And I know this is what a lot of people really dread, but it's quite simple actually. You just buy yourself a grinder, fill this up, my goodness. All right, fill this up to the top, throw on the lid. Now for French press, you're going to wanna, it's not gonna be too fine. It's gonna be a little chunky so it doesn't go through this French press screen. Press the button, this will be loud. Just kind of check what it is. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see here, I have a nice grind. These were once beans just a second ago. So right now I'm looking for my nice flavorful treat. So what do we do next? We put the grinds into this. This is called a French press. And although it seems very fancy, what we do is put the grinds in the bottom of that. And then we put a screen over it so just like this, this has a screen. We're gonna let these grinds float in the hot water that we're preparing right here. And then at the very end, this screen pushes all the grinds down to the, the grounds, all the way to the bottom of the French press, pressing it to the bottom. So that's why it's called French press. And then what you're left with is a delicious, nutritious coffee, hopefully has a ton of bacon flavor. So I do about four or five huge scoops of this um, fresh ground coffee here. And then what I was told by somebody at a coffee shop long ago is the perfect amount of time at 200 degrees is four minutes on the dot. Not four and a half minutes, your coffee will taste burnt. Not three minutes and 30 seconds, it won't extract enough of the flavor out of the coffee grinds. We're just waiting just a little bit longer for this French press. Now let's talk about Keurig right now while we're at it. If you are a Keurig user, you don't use this type. I actually have this type of coffee here I'll grab. Don't use this type of Keurig cup. I mean, it's made of plastic. You get a lot of uh, phthalates through here and BPAs. Um, 
this is garbage. Don't buy these. What I do like is Trader Joe's has an organic line. Uh, it does have a little bit of plastic in it. The rest is through netting though. I found that that's a, a pretty good choice if you're looking for a quick fix. Looks like our French press is ready to be poured. So I'm going to take this kettle. I'll pour it up. I just do a couple of cups of water. This is not an exact science. Just depends how strong you want it. Mm, that's good. All right, let's do what I said. Uh, I like to mix this up too. Not everyone does this, but I mix this in and I'm going to set a timer for four minutes. So I will see you in four minutes where we'll press the grounds all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so it's been four minutes and we're ready to press down this coffee. Let's bring that to the bottom. And then you pour right out of the French press. And of course I forgot a mug. Looks like I'll have to uh, get one of my more manly type mugs. This is Princess Jasmine coffee mug. And there we have it. I'm ready to drink. So if you are looking to get that perfect, healthy cup of coffee, try a French press. Try French pressing your coffee. Try grinding your beans that morning and use it from organic source. I'm about to drink this delicious thing. I hope you guys join me too. We'll see you next week on the weekly video fix.